Our Swahili service colleague, Abu Shakur Aboud, is in the DRC capital, Kinshasa, and earlier today, he spoke with editor Kate Pallon Dawson about what's been happening today. They started by talking about the scene there in Kinshasa. It's calm. The whole city is calm. The whole city is on vacation. Today it was an official holiday, but it's a chaotic scene at all polling stations. The polling stations have been chaotic. Uh, they have been open late, two to three hours late. I was also just informed that there was uh, some stations were not open until 1 p.m. So that's really, really late. And uh, that's what is happening in the city. The mood, of course, people are just confused. Why was it delayed? Why the Electoral Commission, CENI, was not prepared to be at this time? And if in Kinshasa the situation is like that, how about the rest of the country? So uh, you had talked about the problems in Kinshasa. What does that mean for voting in villages and and Eastern DRC, where there's always a concern about security? Well, the situation which is happening in Shasa is repeating itself in the whole country. Our stringer in Goma is reporting that at one refugee camp near the town uh, where there was a voting station, refugees came and stole the material because they are not able to vote. So they said, we are taking this and going there. So there's an investigation going down there. Uh, in Equator, uh, some people burnt uh, e- uh, electro- electoral machines because they believed somebody from the government, a member of parliament, passed through the office before anybody else, and he was not supposed. So you have incidents which are small but can be significant in the outcome of the results. In many regions uh, um, where there's no electricity, the machines have independent uh, batteries, but they've discovered some of the batteries are not working properly. So you have a lot of issues taking place, and we don't know how the outcome is going to be. Now, when do we expect the results? The machine, which is so modern, we are told we, they can get results immediately. But now we are questioning ourselves, view the way they are working, view the way they have ill-prepared this thing. Will they be able to get all the results and be credible. But uh, according to the Constitution, the Electoral Commission has until the end of the month to produce the results. So they have time, but we are expecting results to be known by the end of, I don't know if I can say today, because I don't know if the time will be extended, because we believe most of observers and reporters, this cannot finish today. So we don't know what's going to happen. So we can't give you a deadline. When do we expect the results? Oh, one one quick question. You just said it might not end today. Is there a plan to possibly extend voting then? Now, there comes a constitutional issue. Uh, There cannot, there is no constitutional issue saying that the elections can go on the second day. I talked with an senior advisor of Chisekedi who was voting in one of the stations and he said he's hoping that the CENI will extend until 7, 8, until all the people vote. But the issue is here by 6 o'clock it's dark. Many places we have seen in the voting is taking place in primary schools which have no electricity. So they can't go on to the night. So there is all those infrastructure issue, which can be a challenge. That was editor Abdu Shakur Aboud with VOA's Swahili service. He was speaking with my colleague, Kate Pound Dawson from Kinshasa. Meanwhile, Congolese voters around the world are gathering at their country's embassies today to vote. Reporter Jeanne Niwa with VOA's French to Africa service is at the DRC Embassy here in Washington. We have her on the line now to tell us what's happening there. Welcome, Ginny. Hi there. So, yes, this is a historical moment for the diaspora in the United States. The voting is happening in the basement of the embassy. It's, I would say the room is divided into sections. You have a waiting area because it is cold today, so you have the voters who are able to sit down. The other section is the voting session. Um, Electors are welcomed by the commission. They go from one station to another. The first station is where they show their card. 
passing that question, they will pass in front of the observer, then go to the president, who will explain to them how to vote on the bulletin. The diaspora can only vote for the presidential, and, you know, that, that's it, that is it. So it's one bulletin. It's explained by the president. Then they go to the machine. The machine, they will see the different picture of um, their uh, of the candidate. From that point on, they will confirm the vote. The, the picture will be shown in the back of the bulletin. From that point, they will go to another station where um, they will be there. Card will be returned, they will sign the present, and then their finger will be inked. And um, I'm sorry, from, um, from the, the machine, they will go in, in the middle of the room, put the bulletin in the box, the true box, and then get the card returned. It's uh, happening slowly but surely. There's approximately 20 people, and the people are still coming. So what's so significant about this vote? Well, you know, the diaspora always felt, of, I think, disconnected, and this is a moment where, you know, the voice will be heard. So what are people saying about their experience there voting? Are they confident about this election process? They are confident. They are still observing. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk to a lot of people. They're very focused right now. But uh, they, are congr- you know, con- they, they are, you know, talking in front of the... The voting, they are sharing the experience, and they seem to enjoy it. Thank you, Jenny, for joining us. The death toll resulting from the explosion and fire at Guinea's main fuel depot increased from 14 to 18 on Tuesday night. The government announced the minimum reopening of downtown Conakry's administrations and the resumption of diesel supplies throughout the country on Wednesday. The incident occurred on Sunday night in the port area of Kalum, Conakry's administrative and business district, causing extensive material damage and halting economic activities. Although the fire was contained and brought under control on Monday afternoon, smoke continued to emanate from the site and firefighters were still actively working on Tuesday. The fire inflicted significant damage, affecting buildings over a radius of more than a kilometer, including the one housing the trial related to the September 28, 2009 massacre. Heavily deployed soldiers wearing helmets and masks enforced traffic restrictions in the fire-affected area on Tuesday. The desert port area prompted the local population to free to the suburbs. The public prosecutor initiated a judicial inquiry into the alleged arson to determine the causes of the fire and identify those responsible. As of now, no information is available regarding the origin of the fire. On Monday, authorities established a crisis unit activating a health emergency plan to address the treatment of the injured. The public prosecutor initiated a judicial inquiry into the arrest arson to determine the causes of the fire and identify those responsible. As of now, no information is available regarding the origin of the fire. On Monday, authorities established a crisis unit activating a health emergency plan to address the treatment of the injured. It's crazy. What's happening here? Look at these windows. Look at my office. Can you imagine if this explosion had taken place in the middle of the day on working day? Wonders Mamadou Diane Diaro, the managing director. The Attorney General has opened a judicial inquiry into the alleged facts of Alson to determine the causes of the fire and who was responsible. No information is yet available on the origin of the fire. International reactions and expressions of solidarity continued to pour in on Wednesday. Pope Francis expressed his closeness to the families of the deceased and the injured. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.